Oh, hey, welcome back, Bartlett Arborist Supply. Glad you're here, climbers. Today I'm really stoked. We're doing some rigging. I love this. There's a lot to talk about here. We're going to try and keep it straight to the action. But I do want to let you know how we got this set up real quick. So we got some 12 mil Sirius here tied off to this limb structure. It's going across the driveway out to a floating block system. Um, we are going to integrate a tag line here on this part of the spar. It's going to allow this to control and float nice and easy. We have some obstructions below us that we don't want to hit. So essentially, we didn't want to rig negatively off of the apical Mary stem here. There was more limb than spar. So we didn't want to do that. There was already some damage on the, uh, the trunk down below where the root flare is at the base. So our decision was to uh, put some rigging on the opposite side of the driveway here and uh, float it across. Hey, I'm even floating. We might as well be in a boat. So with that being tied off, we have that in a porter wrap on the opposite side already. I am going to introduce my tagline using the Rock Exotica downrigger. And uh, this has two really nice friction settings, which we'll get into in just a moment here. I'm gonna drop down, get my tag line ready. So tying this off, if you have a really long dead eye sling, I mean, sometimes you need all this dead eye to tie something off and then other times you don't. So here's a real neat tie off method. Keeps everything real simple. I'm gonna pull a bite of rope Pass it around the tree. Slide the downrigger through it. And then I'm going to take a bite of rope on this side. Pass it around the tree. Slide the downrigger through it. And I'll tighten those up. Finish it off. Two half hitches. So twist. Dump it through. Twist. Dump it through, now we're tied off. Got a little bit of tail to manage here. So I'm gonna create some half hitches up here, which aren't gonna be anything for essentially securing this rope. It's just gonna keep this loose end out of our rigging here. Just kinda of keep that out of the way. Now. Let's talk about these two friction settings here. So setting one would be the equivalent of essentially a half wrap on your porter wrap, a little bit less than a half wrap. Setting two would be about the equivalent of, excuse me, the equivalent of a little bit less than a full wrap on your porter wrap. So if you have an inexperienced ground crew, being able to carry this around in the tree with you it's actually kind of like a really, really nice get up. You can control the friction being placed here where instead of trying to instruct the individual, you got into a situation where you need to rig, but they don't know how to hook it all up. And then they, we get into that. If you don't know how to tie a knot, tie a lot type thing, you're putting yourself at risk, whatever's below you, your obstructions, the home, pool, fence, you get where I'm going with this. So we have our downrigger set up here. So that's gonna be our tagline set up. Now I'm gonna holler down to my ground crew. I've got Abden with me today. We have this nice little open area that we want to swing this through. They don't want any damage coming to the hickory or any of the adjacent trees. So we always get into this, how hard do we pull? In this specific scenario, with the rigging that we have on the opposite side of the driveway, I want just a little bit of pressure on that line before I start to make my notch here. Reason for that, if there is no weight whatsoever, if he has nothing on that line at all, essentially what's gonna happen is it's gonna start to build momentum, a ton of inertia, it's gonna drop into the system, we're gonna shock load over there, we're gonna shock load right here at our tag line. If he just has just a little bit of tension on it, that's gonna allow it to drift 
and keep any of the slack from generating like that hard drop force. If he was to go the extreme, the polar opposite of no slack, eventually as we're cutting the notch or as we start our back cut, it does almost the same thing where it shoots away from where we are, everything gets loaded again. So we're gonna try and just keep that little bit of pressure on that line so that way it can sweep over on its own accord, drop into the system and everything's nice and smooth. We're not jarring everything, we're not shock loading our ropes and our systems. So go ahead, Abdin, just put a little bit of tension into it. That'll work. So it looks like Abdin went with about a, uh, about a full wrap, possibly a wrap and a half down there. Now again, with the amount of weight that we're trying to carry over there, this downrigger, I have this set on position two, so it's gonna be roughly just a little bit less than a full wrap on a porter wrap. And that should have this nice, easy drag to go across and keep some nice tension on it. Now, generally I wouldn't run rigging operations in the tree. Um, in this case, we're a light crew today. It's just him and I. So I'm gonna make this a little bit easier for myself so that way I don't have a bunch of components flying. I'm gonna take a sling here. I'm gonna girth hitch this onto the tree. Keep that stitching out of there. There we go. Remove this other sling. And now I'm gonna take the downside of this line here. I'm gonna clip it in here. So now what it's gonna, how this is all gonna work is when I go to make this notch, I've got this nice clear area. I'm free and secure from the tree. I'll be able to make the notch, start a back cut, be able to stow the saw safely without ramming around. And then I can just gently reach my hand down here. And if I need to clutch a little bit and allow that smooth floating transition across the driveway here. This is a designated uh, sling for rigging, as is this carabiner. It's super old, retired climbing stuff, and uh, it serves its purpose still. All right, now we'll get in position to make that cut. So I X up my lanyard here. That way it stays in place for me. Manage that slack up. Now, with this notch here, there's a few different ways we can go about it. Uh, standard notch, open face, Humboldt. Standard notches are known for generating the force back down. So anytime you're running a standard notch on a vertical tree, as it runs forward, the force gets generated and pushes downwards. With a Humboldt, as you create that momentum heading forward, the force stays the same, generates out. So it follows depending on where the flat portion of your notch is. So standard notch, 45 upper, straight lower, force is on the flat. Humboldt, flat upper, 45 lower, force is on the flat. Open face, open face is a good option. However, between our rigging point, which is over here, and where we're actually tied off to, if we use an open face, generating way too much swing. And then it'll kind of start to spin as it goes off, which will create load and a bunch of shaking. So I just want that 45, just a, either a standard notch or a Humboldt, so that way when it comes off, 
it'll basically be pointing directly at our rigging point, detach, and just make this nice transition across. So we're gonna go with the Humboldt. Give myself a little bit of open room here. Everybody clear, chainsaw coming hot. Now, I wanna cut this so that way the weight of the limb allows it to move out. If I cut the notch straight vertical with terra firma, so like this, it might move, but not enough. Eventually it will just crack and break and fall over. So I'm gonna create this notch that's essentially probably, if this is our 90 degree angle, I'm gonna point it downwards just a little bit so that way it can just swoop across here and generate its own forces that'll just carry it across. So my Humboldt will kind of go at an angle down this way. Stand clear, notching. <laughs> Clean that up just a little bit. Looks good. Now, communicate with our ground real quick. Make sure they're all set. Abden, you good on that rope? Yeah, you need more tension, you're still good. I like it. You're holding it nice and steady. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I have good secured feet here and that my systems are holding me nice. So essentially, if I lose my footing while cutting, what I don't want to do is fall into my cutter towards my chainsaw. So if I let go with my feet right now and float, I'm not falling into a running chainsaw essentially. So this is a nice position right here. All good, bud? Okay, yeah. getting in position. Chainsaw is hot, coming for the back cut. Beautiful. Give me a moment, I'm actually gonna remove this here. All good. Okay, I got enough slack, I'm gonna pull it out of the downrigger. Okay. And so during this whole portion here, we're trying to keep nice good communication between ourselves. That way, uh, during all of this, we're not uh, yelling and screaming and something's not unexpected or nothing crazy's happening. We just try and let everybody know the next move so that way it's all good. Okay, yep. fully yours, fully yours. Now the beauty part about this is, is as he starts to lower this down to the ground, what I can do is control the butt of this thing and allow it to lay flat. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of tension on this. And then as he lets it down, nice and flat in the driveway, it's not stood straight up and then creating this fall hazard. Thank you so much for hanging out with us during this rigging operation. Make sure you're keeping real good communication skills with your groundies, man. If it wasn't for my guys on the ground, I'd just be another dude in the tree dropping stuff. So hopefully you got some good info from this. We're going to put out a lot more rigging videos here in the near future. As always, thank you for liking, subscribing, checking out the rest of the content on the YouTube channel, BartlettMan.com. As always, all of the gear is here. Thank you so much, climbers. Be safe out there.